Today we're going to talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is basically a process where plants create their own food. Um, when a plant creates its own food, it's known as an autotroph. Auto means self, and troph means kind of to create, so it's creating a food by itself. Um, so basically a plant only needs the sun and certain other elements to create its own food. It doesn't have to hunt or find food in the environment. Um, the word photo stands for light, okay, or the prefix, excuse me, photo stands for light. Synthesize means to create, so we're creating something from light. A um, couple quick reminders, make sure you're taking your Cornell notes and make sure that you're writing down things that I say as well as things that are written on the slide. Here we go. So what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process of creating energy from light um, that a plant does, basically. Um, it's a chemical reaction, so basically a plant will take light and it will take carbon dioxide and water and it will mix those and through a chemical reaction it will end up creating its own energy. The plant then stores that energy as sugars or starches within the plant. You may also hear it called glucose and every once in a while you hear somebody call it carbohydrates. Okay? So basically the plant stores this chemical energy that it's created as sugar or starch or glucose or carbohydrate. When the plant needs more energy it will take and burn those sugars through a process called respiration and that process respiration releases that energy from the sugar and the starch so that the plant can use it. Um, finally photosynthesis happens mostly in plants and certain types of algae okay? so that's where it occurs. So where in the plant does photosynthesis happen? Well photosynthesis, oh, excuse me, photosynthesis happens in the leaves of a plant. This is a cross section of a leaf Okay. Up here, this is the top of the leaf, basically the skin of the leaf, called the epidermis. Okay. Underneath the top of the leaf, or the skin, we have these cells called palisade cells. Palisade cells are actually where photosynthesis happens. Okay. Inside of each one of these palisade cells, we have chloroplasts. They have chlorophyll in them, and the chlorophyll is what captures the energy from the sun. So basically the sun is beating down on this plant, on the skin of this plant, basically shining down on the plant. And then as it shines through the skin, the chloroplasts inside, the palisade cells, capture that light energy using the chlorophyll okay, and store it so the plant can do photosynthesis inside of these palisade cells. Um, chlorophyll, if you don't know, is a green color. That's why the leaves are green, because basically this greenish chemical makes the leaves look green. Um, another quick thing to note, this is the bottom of the leaf down here. Okay. On the bottom side of the leaf we have these things called stomata. And the stomata are where extra water ends up leaving the leaf through the stomata. And it turns out that's also where carbon dioxide is going to come in through these tiny little holes called stomata. We talked about those a bit in sixth grade when we talked about transpiration. Transpiration is where water leaves the plant and goes into the atmosphere and it leaves through these tiny little holes on the bottom of the leaf called stomata. Um, to give you another view, let me draw it out here. So if I had a leaf, and you have to bear with me, you know my drawing is poor, but if I had a leaf and let's say this is the bottom of the leaf, there would be all these tiny holes through these tiny holes, water would come out if we have too much water in the leaf. Okay, and then carbon dioxide comes in, and we call those stomata. So basically, this is where um, photosynthesis happens inside the leaf, inside these palisade cells. Um, light comes through the top of the leaf and is captured by the chloroplasts. Carbon dioxide comes up through the stomata and ends up going into the palisade cells and then photosynthesis happens. So what do plants need in order to photosynthesize? Well they need light energy, okay, so energy from the sun. Again that's captured by the chloroplasts with the chlorophyll. They need some carbon dioxide, it's a gas, okay, and this is the chemical equation for carbon dioxide. The C stands for carbon, the O stands for oxygen, so if you take one carbon element or molecule or atom and you put it together with two oxygen atoms and you chemically bond them together you get carbon dioxide. 
And so you need light, you need carbon dioxide, and you also need water. Water, the chemical symbol is H2O. Two hydrogen atoms put together, chemically bonded with one oxygen atom, gives you water. And finally, you need those chloroplasts with the chlorophyll. All those put together can make photosynthesis happen. So what does a plant make when it gets done with photosynthesis? Well, when it gets done with photosynthesis, it makes sugars and starches that it stores in the plant for energy for later on. And it releases oxygen. Oxygen is actually a waste product of photosynthesis. So when a plant is done make, doing photosynthesis, it's made sugar for itself to use later as energy. And it releases oxygen in the atmosphere as a waste product. Kind of think of it as the, the, the poop of the plant. Oxygen is basically the poop of the plant coming out when it's done with photosynthesis. So what happens during photosynthesis? Well, the plant captures the light from the sun. Um, it's in order to make glucose. Um, the sunlight provides the energy for all those chemical reactions to occur, and it's captured by the chlorophyll in the chloroplasts. Then you mix that energy with the carbon dioxide in the water, and that makes a chemical reaction happen that makes the sugars, and it also releases oxygen. Um, carbon dioxide, we already talked about, enters the leaf through those little holes in the bottom called stomata. The way I remember stomata, guys, is remember carbon dioxide comes in through the stomata, but also extra water that the plant doesn't need goes out through the stomata. So when the water drips off the bottom of the leaves, it almost looks like the leaves are crying. Okay? And so I think of what's stomata with you because the leaves are crying. So that's how I remember that. What's stomata with you? Because that's where the water comes out, makes the leaves kind of look like they're crying. But carbon dioxide goes in through those stomata. Then the carbon dioxide combines with the light energy in the chloroplasts and the water to make the sugars and the starch, the glucose. Um, the sugars move throughout the whole plant. So the sugar goes into the leaves, the roots, the stem, the fruit, and it's stored in the whole plant for later use. Um, some of that sugar might be used right away by the plant for energy. If so, it's burned through a process called respiration and turned into energy. Um, the rest of the sugars, though, that the plant doesn't need right away, it stores for later, and it stores it in the form of starch. It's kind of like human beings storing fat. Um, if you don't, you don't know, when we make food, basically, or when we take in calories, we burn certain amounts of calories right away, and then the rest of it we store as fat for later use. Um, the plant stores the starch for later use um, throughout its plant tissues. So this is very important because Cambridge has two different types of equations you need to know. They have word equations, and they have something called chemical equations, which we're going to talk about in a minute. This is the word equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water, and this little arrow means makes or yields. So when you put carbon dioxide together with water and the light energy from the sun, it makes glucose plus oxygen. This is important, guys. You're going to need to memorize this one because Cambridge will ask you about it, and it will be on your test for this unit. So make sure you've got this down. The word equation, word equations use words for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water makes glucose plus oxygen. Now this is the chemical equation for photosynthesis. A chemical equation uses symbols to represent all the different parts that go into the chemical reaction and all the different parts that come out of the chemical reaction. So here, remember we talked about this, this is the chemical symbol for carbon dioxide. You need six carbon dioxide molecules plus six Remember, this is the formula for water. Water molecules makes or yields. This is the chemical equation for starch or sugar, okay, plus, or glucose, plus, and this is the oxygen that is the waste product. You have six, basically, molecules of oxygen that are released into the atmosphere. So this is the chemical equation. Six carbon dioxide plus six water yields sugar or glucose plus six oxygen molecules that are released into the atmosphere. Now something quick to note, and we're going to talk about this more with chemistry, but I'm going to show you right here. You will notice everything that goes in to a chemical reaction 
must come out of the chemical reaction as well. Nothing ever disappears or is burned up. Everything that comes in always comes out. Let me show you what I mean. Here I've got six carbon atoms, so 6C, and over here I have six carbon atoms that come out. So six go in, six come out. Here if we count the oxygen atoms, you'll notice six times two, right here, is 12. So here I have 12 oxygen atoms. And here, six times this, this down here, when there's nothing here, it means there's like a one there. So there's one oxygen atom. So six times one is six. So over here, I have a total of 18 oxygen atoms. If you look over here, when I'm done, when the chemical equation or the chemical reaction is over, here there's six oxygen atoms. And here I have six times two is 12 oxygen atoms for a total, again, of 18 oxygen atoms. So notice 18 went in, 18 come out. Same thing for the hydrogen. Here I've got six times two is 12, and here I've got 12 hydrogen atoms. Whatever goes in must comes out. A chemical reaction, guys, is basically just taking certain components or certain things that come in and then mixing them around and then sending them out as something different. So here we took carbon dioxide and water in, we mix the different the different components or the different elements around, and we get sugar and oxygen coming out. That's a chemical reaction. This thing where what comes in must go out is called conservation of matter. So it basically means all the matter that goes in must come out the other side. Nothing ever disappears. Um, what else do plants need to survive? Well, we're not going to go into a lot of detail right now. We're going to cover this later on in the unit, but plants also need minerals to survive. Um, they do, they use minerals for um, making chlorophyll. They use minerals for growth. They use minerals for um, tissue development. They use minerals for making fruit. Um, they use minerals for creating proteins. So they do need minerals. And we'll talk more later on about what types of minerals. Um, we are going to, in class, be testing a plants for starch. So we're going to test plants to see that photosynthesis actually happened. The way we know photosynthesis happened is if we can see the starch inside of the plant. So we're going to test to see that starch actually is created in the plants. Here's how we test it. Well, we got a couple of problems first. Problem number one, that cell wall around plant cells, remember, is meant to protect the plant. And so that cell wall is not going to let, well, let me back up, my bad, real quick. In order to test for starch, okay, we have to basically put iodine on the plant. Iodine is a chemical that is brown, but when you put it on starch, the iodine turns black. So if you put iodine on something and it has starch in it, the iodine will change color, it'll turn black. Well, we've got a little problem. The plant cells, their cell walls, are trying to protect the cells of the plant. And so they know that iodine is not great for the plant, and so they try to keep the iodine out. Okay? So we have to get rid of the cell walls or break the cell walls down so that we can get the iodine into the cells. To do that, we're going to put our leaf in boiling water. Okay? Boiling water will basically break down the cell wall and make it more permeable or open to having the iodine come in. Okay. Our second problem is all that chlorophyll. That chlorophyll makes the plant and the leaf look green because it's a green chemical. Well, we can't see the iodine change from brown to black if we've got all that green in there. It's going to mess it up. So we're basically going to next, after we boil the leaf, we're going to dip the leaf in something called ethanol. And that ethanol will get rid of that green color in the chlorophyll. So it'll get rid of it. Then we're going to rinse the leaf off just to kind of get rid of all the boiling water and the ethanol and rinse it all off. And finally, then we're going to put iodine on the leaf. And when we put iodine on the leaf, if the leaf has starch in it, the iodine will change from brown to black, or the leaf will basically turn black. That's how we know we have starch. That's how we know photosynthesis happened. So if you don't remember this, don't worry too much about it. I am going to give out directions when we actually do this, but I wanted to give you a heads up of how you test to see that photosynthesis has actually happened. So last thing, why is photosynthesis important to us? Two main reasons. Number one, you, as we talked about last year, plants are producers, so they're pretty much at the bottom of the food chain. 
all the animals, there are certain animals then that eat the plants, the primary consumers, and then the secondary consumers eat the primary consumers, and the tertiary consumers eat the secondary consumers. So basically, without the plants, the bottom of our food chain is wiped out. And the, then the primary consumers would die, the secondary consumers would die because there's not enough of them to eat. And so without plants, um, we would be, life on Earth as we know it would be toast. We wouldn't be able to have, a food, have food chains the way we do now. Um, the second reason we need plants is because of the oxygen they release. Yeah, you may not know, but when we breathe, we breathe in oxygen, and animals do this as well. They breathe in oxygen, and we breathe out carbon dioxide. So oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. The plants then take that carbon dioxide that we breathe out, and they end up breathing it, or bringing it in through the stomata and doing photosynthesis, and then they release oxygen. So that oxygen, then we are able to breathe in again. It's like a giant circle of life type thing. We breathe out carbon dioxide. The plants use that and send out oxygen. We take that oxygen in, breathe out carbon dioxide. It's a giant circle. Um, I won't sing for you the circle of life. You're not ready for that yet. But it's a giant circle. So without plants, we would not be able basically to breathe anymore. We would eventually run out of oxygen on the planet. And life as we know it again would die out. So that's why photosynthesis is super important to us. Um, there's a Khan Academy video. I will include, this link doesn't work, but I will include the link um, on the Collaborized Classroom assignment for it. Um, so if you want to have more information about photosynthesis, you can watch the video at that link. I will include that in Collaborized Classroom. Uh, make sure that you've taken your notes and that you're ready to show them to me in class before you do the labs. And have a good day.